beautiful souls. I hope you're doing well. Today, it is my great pleasure to bring another creative intuitive transmission to you, which uh, bears the title Honoring the Sacred Feminine. It's a very high vibe, high frequency um, uh, session today because we have beautiful colors and images and music uh, to bring to you today. Uh, we will be having a look and analyzing the iconography of the artwork we have created, which is entitled Laraman. Laraman, and you can uh, see here how it's spelled. Uh, but we will be looking at this a little bit uh, later in our presentation. First of all, uh, in this transmission, let's look, have a look at the two pieces of music that were inspired uh, for us today by my higher self guidance or uh, my higher guidance and uh, the high frequency guidance. And these uh, these two pieces of music, the first one is by Nawang Kechog. I don't know if that this is how his name is pronounced. Uh, Nawang Kechog is actually a Tibetan flute player and composer uh, who has been, interestingly enough, for 11 years, he has been a Tibetan monk. And for four years, he has been a hermit in the Himalayan foothills. Uh, since then, he has uh, produced a lot of beautiful flute music uh, and he has traveled around the world. Um, the piece of music that was inspired for us today by Nawang Kechok is called the Turquoise Lamp. And it's a very, very beautiful piece of a solo flute but there's also a female uh, chanting or chant that arrives in in the song and it's very high frequency very high vibe beautiful very um i don't know how to say it it's a, it's it's a piece of music that is very contemplative and and very high vibe uh, before I go a little bit deeper into the sim symbolism of all this, I will go to the second song, which is a song by the group Dead Can Dance. Uh, and the, the piece of music is entitled The Promised Womb. Dead Can Dance, for those who don't know them, are actually a group uh, that I've personally listened to when I was as a, since I was a teenager. So that was a while ago. Um, and it's a group that uh, Australian members uh who are composed, um, uh, amongst others, by Lisa Gerard, who is a beautiful uh, singer, a uh, wonderful singer that I've shared music about her in previous videos. Um, you can have a look at that. You know, See the Sun is one of them. Uh, and Lisa Gerard and her partner at the time, um, Brandon Perry, uh, were composed with other members, also this group Dead Can Dance, which um, focused on kind of, transcendental, medieval, contemplative music with mixed with world music. It's hard to explain. It's very, in my heart, I feel it very high vibe, very original, very unique. And they've been influenced by a lot of world music, but also sacred music from, uh, you know, the, 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 the medieval period, from the Renaissance period, uh, and, you know, early music. So, it's very original. I invite you to discover this group. Uh, they they have disbanded now. Uh, Lisa Gerard is on a solo career, uh, but um, beautiful music um, that you know mostly date from the the end of the eighties, nineties, and um, this song, "The Promised Womb," which as a title is already interesting in terms of titles, uh, comes from an album um, entitled "Ion," uh, which explores early music, as I've said, you know, medieval and renaissance, renaissance music. And the the cover of the album is actually um, an odd or homage to Hieronymus Bosch uh, paintings, The Garden of Earthly Delights, which also I thought was interesting. Uh, it's a very well-known painting, so if you want to have a look at that. But I thought also that was very interesting in the whole um um, iconographical analysis that we're having today. So here, th that's the actual basic information. Um, I want to add to that because immediately, not only Nawang Kechog's music, but also um, the, you know, the, 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 his, his life, if you want, and this notion of, you know, honoring the sacred feminine and uh, the name of, uh, you know, the, the, that can then song is the promised womb, which is again very um, something associated, you know, the the womb of the woman, of the female, of the creative source energy. Um, 
there is a, an incredibly beautiful movie I invite you to have a look at, which is entitled Samsara. And there's two me- movies that exist that bear that name, Samsara from uh, 2001 and Samsara in 2011. They're two different movies by two different producers and, you know, um, yeah. But the one, although Samsara 2011 and 11 from 2011 is is an absolute odd to beauty, to life, to terat. It's a film to see. It's an incredible jewel. The one I had in mind today was about Samsara from the year 2001, which is a beautiful spiritual love story um, that is uh, about a young monk who has renounced a lot of, has renounced the world. And he's totally into his spiritual practice as a Tibetan monk. And he's very, very high out there, you know, like he's like the best monk. He can meditate for like days and months without eating. And he's just out there, you know, but uh, at some point he decides to just let go of all this and just, he falls in love with a woman and actually marries her and lives a normal life as a peasant. And the whole film is absolutely visually is a, is, a, is a complete work of art. It's so beautiful. But the spiritual message that comes out of this film is also incredible, beautiful. Because, um, and I'm not going to go through the whole plot of the story, but the, the ending or, the, or the, the philosophical message we get from that movie is that uh, there is something about his wife who is very patient and loving and caring and benevolent and respectful that makes her closer to God or Buddha or whatever he's trying to do or to be when he's doing his spiritual journey than he is because he ends up like cheating on his wife and you know all kinds of things while she's she remains you know like a very spiritually grounded and high frequency being you know so so also, although she represents you know motherhood and real you know everyday life with you know bearing children and eating and things you know as the female has been associated on earth from thousands of years in this movie she really represents the sacred feminine and, and the buddha energy in the female so that's really really beautiful and just the idea of having that movie coming back to me when i've heard nawang kecho's song but also dead can dance the promised womb song uh, links all of these elements together symbolically so i thought that was quite interesting so i invite you to see both movies but especially the 2001 uh samsara movie so that was that was quite beautiful Another element I want to discuss here is the background that was chosen. Uh, as always, like the music and like everything, like the what I'm wearing and everything is always uh, randomly chosen by my high frequency vibration and my higher self. And the background we have here is that of a very dignified, beautiful woman in white uh, in a in a boat here who is uh, navigating on some body of water, which uh, often water is associated with the unconscious, but also with the feminine, you know, the, the, the of, often females and the feminine energy is related to, to water, but also to the ocean, for example. And here we have this beautiful, a very dignified woman, very sacred kind of woman, high frequency, who's standing on this boat and gliding on that body of water. And she's she has this this lamp or this bringer of light. You know, she, she's like a beacon of light. And there's this also this light in the back here, uh, which comes out of the kind of turquoise, purple, you know, dawn type of atmosphere we have here, which also, for me, uh, really resonates with this notion of the sacred feminine being an important beacon of light and uh, so, something we need to go back to. It's something Alex Collier often mentions uh, in, in his webinars about the fact that, you know, we have left uh, the, the sacred feminine energy behind in the matrix we've been living in. And it's time we go back to that and that the sacred male energy and sacred female energy go linked together again in a sacred embrace without having one being over the other. But, you know, the female energy really needs to re- recover its, you know, place and be in, in synchronicity and, and synchronization and harmony with the male energy as well. So uh, I thought that was also interesting that this visual element was brought here. Um, another element that sometimes I bring in my creative intuitive transmissions is, um, the fact that, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm just going to put some clothes on and I have no idea what I'm going to wear. And today I felt like wearing my turquoise kind of Indian, um, 
um, blouse here that uh, that I love very much. And again, we can see a connection here with the you know the um, Nawang Kichad. Kichog song because you know Himalaya are also at the frontier of uh, of India as well, and uh, and in the movie Samsara two thousand and one, uh, you know there's this connection between India and Tibet, Tibet as well. Uh, the the so this is of a kind of a turquoise color, the same color as my Lyran uh, Larimar. Larimar is a is a is a turquoise color. Uh, crystal uh, and I say Lyran because um, I remember from Elena Donan's um, transmissions from her contact Myra Myra was saying that Larimar is actually a crystal that was brought on Terra by the Lyran people and we know that Lyra doesn't really mean anything for our galactic friends but that it's from K62 which is the Man system um, and this is you know when they came here and colonized somehow um, and they went to the Pleiades as well and everywhere in, in, in the galaxy Nataru, uh, they brought the Larima um, to, to, to Terra. So, you know, basically the Larima is a, is a crystal that's originally from the Lyran, or if you want, uh, from the K62 or uh, Man system. So I'm just mentioning that because, you know, it's just uh, interesting because there was this turquoise color in the, in the, in the earrings, in the ring, in the clothing that I didn't know at all would be uh, appearing also in the choice of music, which is the turquoise lamp. And, you know, we have a lamp here. And for me, turquoise, I always associate that color for some reason with um, Egoria, which is the planet of the uh, La Laani people in the K62 Lyran system. Uh, so originally, at least. So I, all of this kind of comes together and I, I found kind of interesting and you know, for me, like everything just, you know, comes together in, in that way. So that's beautiful. And um, so something that, you know, comes out from all of this information, and I'll go to the, the collage in a minute, is really this notion of like going back to um, accepting the sacred and not only accepting, but raising again to its right place, the sacred feminine. Uh, and, you know, again, the Lyran or K62 Oman system, uh, Erahil and people, uh, not Erahil, but Ahil people um, believed, and it's also the case for the Ahil in the Pleiades now, they believe that source or creator source is actually a female energy, a creative female energy they call Imanna. And, um, and so we are invited to if you want to re reconnect with the sacred feminine energy, not only in our daily life, on Tehran life, uh, and that aspect of ourself, not only as females, but as males as well, because both males and females have the female and the masculine energy uh, within them. It's always a question of, you know, reuniting them uh, within ourselves first, but also in our communities, in our world, in our society, in our beliefs. And so, um, so this particular creative intuitive transmission really focuses on the female energy, but that doesn't mean that it should be going over the ma male energy or masculine energy. It's just to give it back its worth and its its you know its basic importance. And so we are invited uh, not only to connect with that part of ourselves, each of us, male and female, with the sacred feminine energy within us. And whatever our sexual orientation or gender, because it doesn't mean anything, we all have both within ourselves. And also to remind ourselves that, you know, the sacred feminine energy is a powerful creative energy. Uh, and it's not to be just associated with like female things and, you know, bearing children and whatever. It's, it's creativity of life, creation of life is something that goes beyond you know, f femininity or females or women, it's something that has to do with an intent in our lives to be creators of life and, 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 and creators in all, in all kinds of ways, but also to honor the association with the sacred feminine, which has to do with, you know, the womb and the creative of life, like the song, The Promised Womb. 
um, which by the way, also have like this beautiful singing, but that doesn't really have words, um, you know, specific words that at, at least that I could understand. And same thing with the turquoise lamp song by Nawan Kechog, the female sings words, which are don't necessarily mean anything. It's just the female voice, the female frequency. So that's interesting that it's, you know, it's coming in that way. And that again, through the Samsara to 2001 film, we're reminded that, you know, honoring the earthly delights or the garden of the earthly delights in the in the Bosch painting uh, that's on the cover of Dead Can Dance uh, album. Um, we, we can honor that. We can honor the delights of femininity, of even the, you know, the physical pleasures, the, the, the sexual pleasures and everything that come with uh, you know, associate, associating oneself with our own bodies, with our own sacred sexuality. And, you know, sometimes we tend to associate masculine masculine energy to like brain energy and sky energy and feminine, feminine energy to more like, you know, water energy and receptive energy and, and more like physical energy having to do with sexuality, with, with um, fertility and even you know, physical pleasures and things. So um, there is this association there, but we should think beyond the whole, you know, just the light pleasures of of the physical body, but like that everyday life, Tehran incarnated life in the body, which includes the womb and the creation of life is something that we should honor. And that is something that Spirit, it's, it's, it's a form of grounded spirituality, basically. You know, our spirit, spirituality can also take place in those elements of being grounded in everyday life, in sexuality, in sensuality, in, in the creation of life, in everyday life, you know? And so let's stay, let's be careful not to just stay in the mind, you know, in the, you know, um, father a mind, sky, energy, and also remind to be in the mother, Tehran, fertility energy. You know, I'm trying not to get too like um, polarize here with like you know, but there's a little bit of that yin and yang thing going on where you know there's there's these two energies which complement each other and both are important to ground our spirituality because spirituality should not just be about being out there and then just you know having no body and think the body is an illusion no no spirituality is knowing that you have a body honor it because it is the vessel of the soul that you are so it's something we need to honor and honoring the sacred feminine energy is a way of of honoring that body as well so now let's have a look at, at our collage, our, uh, who is, which is uh, entitled La Raman, as I've said. So again, here, inspired by all, by all, by all this uh, turquoise color. Sorry, I'm talking fast because I'm excited and I'm enthusiastic about how all of this comes together. Um, because of the turquoise color that keeps coming back in, in, in the you know inspired music and backgrounds and jewels and everything, uh, obviously I was going to have a, a turquoise kind of color uh, background here that we can see. It's a beautiful uh, green with uh, turquoise of flowers, um, which again, remind us very much of um, the feminine energy through the fertility of the flowers, the trees. Uh, there's something very feminine in that energy there. So that's, that's quite uh, aesthetically pleasing. Then we have two circles, major circles. The lower circle is a navy blue uh, background circle with a uh, golden waves uh in this case um you know and it varies every time i have a cit you know sometimes the motifs can be transformed in order to give more precisions about another meaning so we have to stay uh flexible uh in this particular collage and cit session i would not interpret the waves as being challenges per se but more to associate it with the female energy that as i said and because of the background here often the energy of the female the female sacred energy can be associated with the sea with the ocean so there's this you know typically feminine energy there and that circle is really taking is the biggest of all the circles of this collage then you have on the upper circle has stars which is more associated with you know um um, I guess spirituality or, you know, the contrast with Tehran or earth energy is more like sky energy, which we could associate more with 
masculine energy, if you want, or sacred masculine energy, which complement each other um, in this in this visual representation. But since the 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 main um, the theme of this collage had to do with female energy, the the this, the lower circle that represents female energy is a bit larger. Uh, both of these circles um, have uh, two little cir uh, circles in them, which a little bit like the yin and yang, you know, they have the opposite within them. So within the lower circle that represents the feminine energy, we have a smaller circle, which is turquoise again, but that represents birds in flight, which to me represents more like the sky energy, which could be associated with male sacred energy, while the upper circle, which is supposed to be male energy, uh, has within itself a smaller circle, turquoise again, but which has plants and things which are earthbound and more grounded in, in terra and the soil, and to me represent that feminine element in within the sacred masculine energy. So both complements themselves. And then we have these two beautiful branches of in golden, you know, a flower of life motif, which as always represents for me the energy of source creator that is embracing the masculine energy. Uh, and also represents this hope opening and blooming of life of um you know of sources um creative energy just blooming into the female um background if you want and uh, as I remind you from the the Lyran if you want or even Pleiadian I have a beliefs you know the the female energy is imana is a source is is a female energy so again there's this this element there that i find interesting that uh is uh represented in the collage through these enveloping arms of source that envelop envelops the sacred masculine energy so that's for our collage today our collage is um available as a, an original on my online boutique laraman and also available as a digital file that you can download. Uh, and as always, you can go and print it and have it, uh, I don't know, framed or just, you know, uh, to bring to your own sacred space this, uh, those beautiful high frequencies, high vibrations, but also to be reminded of this message having to do with the sacred feminine energy that we can always uh, include in our life, not only in our societies as Terrans, but also in our individually as human beings, may it be males or females, because we all have a sacred feminine and sacred masculine energy within us that we need to just balance to create this sort of alchemy alchemy that Elena keeps talking about um, to, to be, you know, to be honoring uh, the, 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 the complete beings that we are as souls. So that's it for today. I'm going to leave you here uh, and uh, you will be able to listen to these two beautiful pieces of music while you'll be seeing how I created this collage Laraman. And I wish you a beautiful day. Take immense care of yourself and keeps your high vibrations and high frequencies. Bye. <laughs>